Well, hello, y'all. Well, good day, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I am wet. <laughs> we have been getting rain all day, and uh, you know, it's Sunday. I only had one day in the area to do this vlog, and I was so interested and excited to do it, I didn't want to pass it up. So we're going to be doing it in the rain, but we are in Canopolis, North Carolina, the home of the great Dale Earnhardt and Ralph Earnhardt, the Earnhardt family, racing dynasty. And we are gonna see their home, see the grave of Ralph, and several other things tied to Dale Earnhardt and what they call the Earnhardt Trail. These with Jordan the Lion and you all, it begins right now. Yes. Even though he was a hellraiser in this town, he was beloved, as is the whole family. And they have given him his own plaza with maybe one of the greatest statue likenesses to anyone ever that I have seen in my travels. This looks so much like him. Nine feet tall, but other than that, a dead ringer for the great Dale Earnhardt who his family I mean a lot of them are out here all the time I've uh I've seen interviews with so several of his kids his brothers and sister mother they all would come out here run into fans say hi to fans out here and it was sad because when he died his wife Teresa just for some reason doesn't seem to get along with really anyone else in the family and she had a funeral for Dale where he's buried now out at his ranch near Mooresville and then the rest of his family had kind of a memorial here in Canopolis so he was known as the Great Intimidator he sadly passed away at Daytona 2001 that had been a race that had plagued him most of his career, he tried to win it for 20 years before he finally won it. And um, then two years later, he had all trip driving for DEI and Dale Jr. was also driving at the time and Dale decided he was basically gonna ensure that one of them three or one of those three was gonna win this race. And he was in third position, just like number three, kind of mother henning them, giving them the the track in front of him and anybody that tried to get around he was kind of blocking them off cutting them off and um and then someone tried to get around him and took the back of his bumper with them and they just crashed and sadly it wasn't uh it wasn't something anybody ever could have seen coming michael waltrip did end up winning the race and dale passed away they got him looking good all the way down to the cowboy boots and the Wranglers. It's the kind of guy he was. People said he was a man's man. He was, he was your everyday, every man, almost like your John Wayne of racing. He, when he wasn't racing and working on the cars all week, he was out farming and grabbing eggs from about a thousand chickens and herding his cattle and fishing. The man loved to fish and. Even at the beginning of um, the documentary, Dale, they have him out fishing and he says, it scares me to death to think of what I'm going to do with my life after I'm done racing. I really can't imagine what my life will be like that day when I finally am not a racer anymore. So as sad as, as it is, it's almost fitting that he passed away doing what he loved on the track. But just off to the side, they do have what looks like a headstone because you're, nobody can go visit his headstone now. It's on private property and even his kids can't go visit. He did have one daughter uh, with, with his wife, Teresa, his final wife. And I believe she can see, but uh, she can go visit her father. But I don't believe Dale Jr. or any of his siblings can. Says the Intimidator. Dale Earnhardt, our best friend, in our hearts you will be then, now, and for eternity. Our seven-time Winston Cup champion, a legend indeed. Thank you from your fans, 
your NASCAR family in Vermont, New York, dedicated in 2001. And there's a big mystery as to what happened to his final race car. Some people say that Richard Childress sunk it to the bottom of Lake Norman. Some people say that Teresa still has it on the grounds over at DEI. Some people say it's in Dale's old famous barn. I think he called it the Deerhead Barn, where he would uh, keep all of his kind of prized possessions. That's on the DEI property. We're gonna go over there and I, I'll be able to point it out to you. So this is the monument to a great man. He really was a great man. This is, he was, Richard Petty was the king because Richard Petty won a lot of races and he was a nice guy. Dale was the intimidator because if you were in front of him, you had no chance but to get out of his way. He was gonna get around you. He was innovative beyond belief. I saw where he talked somebody into his early days into letting them race their car and the first thing he did was he drove over there at like midnight he was going to race it the next day and he wanted to adjust the seat and make a new seat and everything and the guy said what are you doing and he's explaining he starts explaining to this guy well if i'm sitting here then i can see all the way around the track from there i'm low enough to the ground he just had like this this weird ingenuity to racing in fact they would say he could see the wind he could actually see wind moving over his car and where it was passing over someone else's car to know when to pass them. And then Dale Jr., of course, followed in his footsteps and was a phenomenal Hall of Fame racer as well. All of these bricks are from people saying, we miss you, always our leader, remembering Dale, forever my hero. He touched a lot of hearts. Richard Childress for a long time retired the number three in Dale's honor until his grandson wanted to race under it. But Dale's mom, Martha, said she just always kind of felt like that was Dale's number. That black and white number three was Dale's. And she said she could accept if they were gonna use the number three again, but just don't make it those colors. Now what's cool is like right around the corner from here, is a place historic to Dale's life. It's kind of funny, I'm gonna tell you about. Let's go see it. It's called Idiot Circle. Man, this rain is brutal today. Over here on the wall it says, you can dream and create and build the most wonderful place in the world, but it takes people to make the dream a reality. Walt Disney. Then they have this really great mural over here. Travel from Canopolis to New York City on the Amtrak Carolinian. So the street that both of those are on is Vance Street. And this is, they called this Idiot Circle because Dale and his friends <laughs> perfected the left turn here. They would come up here and practice their driving, as in go crazy and drive fast. Said so that uh, one time Dale was up here and he saw a car with a lowered front end so he decided he should do that too. So he and his friends went back to Ralph's garage, jacked up the car, pulled the front springs, cut the coils with a blowtorch, and put the springs back on, and then came back down here. <laughs> We're driving this, because the, the ballpark's right there, and it's a real quick, tight left turn, so they'd come flying up here, and then wham. And we will actually go see Ralph's garage in there, the back of the house where they did that work. Nice shirts. It's the local ball team's logo. So the Earnhardts lived in a section of Kannapolis called Car Town, and all the street names were as such. V8, Sedan. Well, here is Dale Earnhardt's childhood home. Home of Ralph and Martha. They also had two brothers and a sister. And there's the famous garage that Ralph would work on his cars and then eventually be working on other people's cars later in life out here. Then Dale would eventually end up working on cars out there. That's where Dale's son, Carrie, 
they had been estranged for 13 years and they reconnected when Carrie was 16 there right there in that garage man I read that when Martha was alive people would stop here all the time and like buy her cookbooks and have her sign them or they'd see her sitting on the porch and just give her a thumbs up or honk the horn or something It's a real pleasure to be here. It really is for me. I think they even made a commercial about Dale and they made it out here about him watching Ralph work on cars and stuff. I love mornings after my dad would race. I'd get up before anyone else, sneak out to the garage and inspect every inch of his old Chevy. Yeah, I got my first taste of racing and my first taste of Sundrop right here. Sun Favorite in the Earnhardt garage for over 40 years. Some things just kind of run in the family. I found a story where Kathy Earnhardt was telling about basically how Ralph passed away. Was that, um, said that they were, they had Grandma Earnhardt out here and she didn't want to wait for the weekend to go home. She lived about five hours away. She didn't want to wait for Dale to drive her home on the weekend. So Kathy and Martha decided to drive her home and Ralph was out here working. He had had a heart attack earlier that year and um, I think he'd had like one race or something maybe or just been out, you know, he basically had given up racing altogether at that point and was working on a part for someone. Drag racer, he and his wife came out here to pick up the part and um, they said that uh, Ralph went inside to get a part. There's a stairwell right behind the those windows goes into the house he went in there and said he'd be just a minute and um, the wife of the man said she waited there for him and after a while he didn't come back and she said his name and he didn't respond she knew he'd had a heart attack earlier that year so she let herself in so she found the water running and that he had had a heart attack and was laying there on the ground he had tried to open a piece of gum and uh, and that was laying on the counter so they called for help and everything, and apparently from what Kathy said, the um, that highway patrol went out on the roads looking for them because this happened in the even before lunchtime, so it was like right after they all left to take Grandma home. And she said when they got up there, she said nobody stopped them along the way. They made it all five hours, dropped her off, and then on the way home stopped at Frank Presley and his wife's house to visit and just say hi. That was um, one of the men that that Ralph used to race for. And um, they said, what are you doing here? And she's like, what do you mean? They said, haven't you talked to anybody at home? You gotta call home. So like, why, what happened? They said, you just gotta call home. So they called and got a hold of Dale. And Dale said, you gotta, you gotta come back as quick as possible. And they said, why, what's going on? He said, just get back here as quick as possible. So, so they drove home and then when they got on this road, she said there were cars lined up up and down the road there was like pretty much nowhere just barely you could drive through and they said they knew exactly what had happened when they saw that they knew that he had he must have passed away because he was a local legend around here but martha lived here for you know years had a ceramic elvis collection in here had a lot of dale memorabilia in here dale used to come here all the time Dale used to work on his cars here. I'm so glad to know it's still in the family and, and all that stuff. Or as, as far as I know, it's still in the family. Historic place for sure. Very, very historic. Dale was already kind of tinkering with race cars by this point because he, he was grown and moved out of the house and he got married and had... A son Carrie, but then they found out they they really couldn't live together and they got a divorce and um, his first wife got remarried and that guy ended up adopting Carrie so that's why Carrie and Dale were estranged for so many years I wonder if they'll ever do anything as far as making this like a historical monument everybody knows it is Surprised there's not like a number three on it somewhere. You can see the 
stairs in the doorway I was telling you about that leads to the kitchen. In fact, I found a bunch of old photos of Ralph cars out here in the parking section, so I'll post those. Kind of get a view of what it would have looked like back in the 60s and 70s. Here you can see they even named one of the main drags right through town, Dale Earnhardt Boulevard. Basically goes right by his childhood home, goes right through the center of town. What an honor. You can see we were on Route 3, where Dale Earnhardt Boulevard is, Route 3. Dale Earnhardt Boulevard also takes you right out to the cemetery where his folks are buried. Right. It's a small cemetery, Center Grove Lutheran Cemetery. I can actually see there was a fence. I made a wrong turn. I could actually see his father's grave from the street, so I know exactly where it is. There you can see the road over here. And beloved master of the dirt track. Right over here, Ralph Earnhardt. Again, sorry about all the rain. This was the only day that I was gonna be able to come out to Canopolis. It was the only, only time I'll be back here in a while. And it was a Sunday and I, you know, I knew some things would be closed and did not anticipate on a lot of rain, but Ralph. Racing was in his blood, baby. Look, it's even got the kids' names. Dan, Randy, and Dale. Says his name, Ralph, there. I assume Martha's here as well, his wife. Maybe not. No, I think maybe this is just for him. That's interesting to me. They were... You know, she lived a long time after he passed away. He passed away in 1973, and she passed away in Christmas of 2021. So she had a lot of years to be mamma to Dale Jr. and Carrie and everyone. That was really sad. I remember seeing an interview with Kathy Earnhardt, Dale's sister, where she said, after after Ralph died, he was the leader of the family. And when he died, those doors to the shop and back got closed and it was almost like they were aimless until Dale stepped up. And Dale was always a leader and always had to be in control of everything they said. And when he decided to start racing and everything and he opened those doors back up and there was put life back in the family again. And then when, when Dale passed away, Martha Earnhardt, Dale's mother, she ended up taking the reins and really kind of being the strength of the family. Rest in peace, Ralph. Yeah, there's always that story that they always say that he, he died working on a car, but it, it wasn't necessarily exactly that. But he was missed, man. He had, he had had a heart attack earlier that year and um and then succumb to a second one okay i'm wrong they have the headstones down here at the base i was kind of expecting them to be a little closer to the headstone but there's martha martha c Earnhardt, december 25th 2021 which is sad because one of her sons is actually born on christmas and here's ralph Ralph Lee Earnhardt. So bummed it was raining today. I mean, it's been off and on pretty hard rain because I stopped at Childress yesterday, Richard Childress, and they have a ton of Dale's race cars. I've done a vlog on that place before, so look up Richard Childress Racing on my channel and you'll see it. But while I was there, they were basically having like a Richard Childress personal belonging garage sale. And on a table, they had some of his old hats and I bought this one. 
just gonna wear it today, but I don't wanna ruin it. So as we saw, Earnhardt's, Ralph Earnhardt was buried over at Center Grove Lutheran Cemetery. And when the cemetery, when the church that went along to that cemetery moved, it moved to where we're at now, which is kind of ironic because right across the street from the new location of the church, it's now Tim Marburger Chevrolet. But at the time it was Edelman's Garage. And that's where Ralph would work on engines. He worked at the uh, shop there perfecting those Ford engines. He would work on the Moonshiners cars like Junior Johnson in the 40s. They would test the top of the line Fords here. A 1940 with a Cadillac V8 engine and three carburetors by racing them up and down this street. This was Highway 29, and Ralph one time hit 120 miles an hour in 30 seconds going up and down this street. They would actually test drive all the cars up and down this road. I believe that's still the same building and everything. Even the street's name, Edelman. And if Edelman's was in a different building, at least we know that history was made here on these hallowed grounds. Seeing all those dollar signs that remind me he had a, Dale had a yacht at one point that's still out there. Somebody owns it. He used to call it Sunday Money. I believe the people that have it have kept it pretty much exactly the way it was when Dale owned it. Sunday money, of course, is because they raced on Sundays, and if you won, you got paid. One funny story is that Martha said the only race that Ralph ever missed was when she went into labor with Dale, and even then he was trying to convince her she wasn't going into labor. He's like, no, let me just load my race car. I think you can wait another two days. And she's like, no, Ralph, I really can't. So now we're just a little south of Kannapolis in Concord. We're going to go to a place called Punchy's. Well, a place that used to be called Punchy's Diner. It was named after the man that owned this tire shop here called Punchy Whitaker. This is Punchy Whitaker's Wheel and Tire. So this is Rachel's place now. And Rachel's family owned Punchy's, I believe. So it's just a continuation of Punchy's Diner. And we came here because Dale used to stop here and he used to eat tomato sandwiches. That was his big thing, so. I want to come in here and get a bite to eat. It's a famous breakfast place. Sure looks a lot different than when it did when he used to come here. It was like an old fashioned diner. Then. So Dale just always got the tomato sandwich. It was like tomato, lettuce, and mayo, I believe. But he'd always stop here on his way to the uh, Charlotte Raceway. So they used to actually have a photo of him up on the walls here when it was Punchy's. And the old tire shop still there. Place is different. It's got a whole different decor and everything, but I'm excited to try the food, especially if it's from the same family lineage. Do you think that's mustard in the purple one? All right, I got the Country Boy omelet, which looks pretty freaking good. And um, she told me that is syrup in the purple. So that answers that question. Man, that food is amazing. And I saw several comments online, people saying that the food's better since it became Rachel. So good job. Well, you can see right up here on Dale Earnhardt Boulevard, there is Curb Music and Motorsports Museum. This is a pretty interesting place because this was the race shop for Curb Motorsports. Now, Mike Curb was, back in the 70s, he was the Lieutenant Governor for California, and at one time the Acting Governor. And he got involved with sponsoring some of the events for races and ended up befriending Bill France Jr. and also Les Richter. And they ended up making him a uh, Grand Marshal for one of the races. He kind of let him know that he was interested in maybe working with a racer. So Les and Bill then contacted Mike and said that Dale Earnhardt was 
only gonna run a partial schedule and ask if he would be willing to provide sponsorship that would possibly lead to the ownership of Dale Earnhardt's team. And so Mike decided to do that. They ended up doing pretty well and Earnhardt won his first NASCAR Winston Cup Series championship in 1980, driving the Mike Curb Production sponsored car to victory in five events. And so of course, Mike Curb then was really inspired to be in racing and later on the 80s ended up signing Richard Petty and Richard Petty scored his 200th victory with a win at Daytona in July of 1984 in one of Mike Curb's cars. So Mike Curb actually said that he was the reason that they got the president out to NASCAR. He was the Lieutenant Governor of California at the time and he was working with President Reagan as the chairman of the RNFC and he said he inspired Reagan to come out and check out a race. Actually giving NASCAR a lot of legitimacy having the president out there. So this was Curb Motorsports. We'll come back and do a video on this whole place because they actually have the car that Dale won that 1980 season in. They have Richard Petty's car in there and I believe the North Carolina State Music Hall of Fame is in there. The museum isn't open today so I'll come back first thing in the morning before I take off out of town but there is Dale's winning car. All right, now we're gonna head out to Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, known as DEI. It's about 15 minutes away. Taking Earnhardt Lake Road to get out there. And we're still out here on the Route 3 North. So this gate right here would have been the entrance to Dale Earnhardt's home and property and everything where he fished. So this is DEI. It is, uh, it's never open. I've been by here several times and it's a, like a museum. And it's just never open. You can see on there it says closed. Last time I was in town I called and I asked um, if there was any way I could see inside while I was in town. And it took them about a week to get back to me and they said, you know, we're sorry, but no, we're just not open. And haven't been open for quite some time. But when Dale died, people flooded these streets to come out and pay their respects to him. This was his, this is where he ran DEI out of. Basically, I think it was in 1988 that he started it. Even though he raced for Richard Childress, he would have his own race car company, his own race team and he would hire racers. And one of the great stories was he and Michael Waltrip became really good friends over time. And Michael had like this historic 250 something races or so that he hadn't ever won. And Dale would always say, you could win in my car, you'd win in my car. So Dale ended up putting his money where his mouth is. He went out and found sponsor for a car and called Michael and said why don't you come race for me so in that final race that Dale unfortunately passed away during Michael won it Dale had positioned Dale Jr. who was racing for DEI Michael who was also racing for DEI he came up with a plan with them early on that he said one of us three is going to win this race so it's uh, a museum it's got several cars tons of trophies you can actually see if you look through the glass in here one of his cars and so sadly his legacy pretty much you know you can go see a lot of his cars at Richard Childress but everything in here I don't know when the last time anybody's been allowed to tour it that's a fan I don't know if it closed because of COVID and just never reopened but the design of it was supposed to look like his glasses through his helmet and the, I mentioned the deer head his deer head barn or deer head 
that was like his personal race barn. And over here is also part of DEI. So that barn was actually behind there. Let me see if I can see any of it from the road. So from the other building, if you're looking over the gate, you'll see like that roof over here to the right. Really all you can see is a roof back there. That was his deer head barn. And there he would keep like the prized deer heads and stuff that he and Richard Childress would go out and shoot and mounted fish. He had enough room for like three cars. He'd work on his cars there. He had a, a loft area with a bunch of his fire suits. The story is that when he died, his wife Teresa just closed up the shop and nobody's been in there since. Some people even believe that the last car that he passed away in, and that wreck is in there. A lot of people believe it's in a barn or somewhere on the premises of DEI. But no one is really for sure. And when I was at Richard Childress Racing and Ask, person that worked there, they seemed almost offended that I asked what happened to the car. I said, oh, has, will it, you think it would ever be put on display just as like a memorial? And she goes, oh no, never. And I said, do you know who owns it? And she said, uh, I really can't say. And I said, so you kind of do. And she said, I knew who had it at one time. That's all she said, so. I do hope at some point they reopen it. Maybe his up in some day. And I believe right directly across the road is where uh, Dale Jr. lived when he was, when he did cribs and was showing off his house and everything in cribs. I think he lived over here on that side. But all the property behind DEI is all owned by Dale Earnhardt Incorporated and the um, beneficiaries and the, the gate down here, further, further down is the entrance to the house and the property and Dale's buried on those grounds. Basically, kind of like in the back of a forest from what I could understand. Just there by himself, they're only, I guess, Teresa's family or Teresa and I don't know. That's just, I'm just going off of what I hear in podcasts and online, what people have said that they know of. So, still waving the flags though. The Deal Earnhardt Incorporated flag is still up there flying. But I'll take you over. There is like a gate that leads to the property and that's the closest that we can get to see his final resting place. Yeah, I think one of these houses was the house that Dale Jr. lived in. I will say this, uh, respectfully, I, from everything that I hear, like I said, I, a lot of people don't seem to care for Teresa as a person, but I know Dale did. And uh, Dale really, his whole life, didn't miss an opportunity to talk about how much he loved her and how perfect they were together and how much she understood and took care of him and everything so you know there's that so yeah I'm not uh, I'm not passing judgment on anybody I don't know the woman or, or anything like that so if you type in Dale Earnhardt's grave site on Google Maps it will bring you here which is a fence that you cannot pass big wooded area and if you look on Google Maps itself here if you look on Google Maps where we are, you would basically go in, take a right, go around this area. He's located back in there. So you, it's not easy to get to him even if you could get through this gate. Well, as I wrap up this video, I wanna thank my newest Patreon, George Lopez, for helping to support this channel and our adventures. Well, this dead end is gonna be basically our dead end. I want to wish Dale Earnhardt to rest in peace. He truly was an interesting, amazing guy. Even if you're not, um, maybe you don't consider yourself a NASCAR or racing fan, but you like interesting people, go watch a documentary on Dale. Go find anything you can. This guy was 
one for the record books. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great night and goodbye. Thank you.